many hours a week do you spend exercising your brain? This is such an important thing to think about as you get older. We want our brains to be strong and healthy and uh, focus on it as much as on physical exercise. I'm going to give you six different games that you can use to keep your brain buzzing and uh, keep, you, keep it strong and healthy as you get a little older. My name is Margaret Manning. I'm with 60 and Me, and uh, thank you so much for being here today. And I hope that you find this topic of interest. It was one that came to me when I was asked once on a form. I think, how many hours of exercise a week do you get? And it was like, exercise? <laughs> what is that? I don't like the gym, but I did. I did start walking, and that was a great physical exercise. But then I had an interview with Dr. John Medina, who is a brain neuroscientist. And you can get a link to the um, interview that we did. He's a, such a sweet man and very entertaining and really smart. And, you know, he has made brains his passion in life. But we talked about the importance of brain activity. It's important to get oxygen to the brain, to, get, to keep the blood flowing. And it can really help to prevent a lot of the aging challenges that we have around dementia, for example, uh, forgetfulness, um, ability to make decisions, you know, things, just memory issues. They're not... I'm not talking about the stereotypical um, aging um, you know, stereotypes, but I'm talking about the things that really do happen when your brain is not developed and exercised. So I've got six different games I want to talk to you about, and I'm sure there'll be one for everybody here. Um, and also to, to mention that we've got a games section on our 60 and Me website, which has got um, all, most of these games, I think all of them, and they're free of charge to play. And you can actually go and uh, just play, uh, go to the uh, home page, and it's at the top. It says games, and then just go there. And this is one way then to get access to all these uh, games, these six brain buzzing games I'm going to uh, share with you. So the first one is Sudoku. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sudoku? Sudoku. So, and that's obviously one that most of you are familiar with. It's um, a, a great brain game for people of all ages. It's actually where you um, you spot patterns and then you strategically solve problems. So if you're a visual person and you like playing games that are like visual in nature, this is a perfect one for you. And it really highlights one thing, is that if we have... Um, our lives are based around certain rhythms, certain patterns, like we walk to the shop the same way every day, or we, you know, we follow an exact same rhythm. It, it actually doesn't do our brains any good to do that. Getting into habits may be um, helpful, it may be saving you time, it may be comfortable, but in terms of stretching your brain, it doesn't help you there. So Sudoku um, is one way to uh, you know, do this uh, and, and solve a problem, learn how to match patterns and get your brain kind of bouncing outside of its boxes. Um, it's in the you know, real world. It helps you to unravel issues and challenges and, um, you know, see connections. And it's also a fun game. I've seen so many people playing this and there are books everywhere, but you can go online and play too. Now, the other one is um, Mahjong another game with a fun name to pronounce. And this keeps your brain sharp because it's a game of matching tiles. It's a very, very popular game for older people in Asia. And it's actually played, uh, you can play it alone, but also in other countries in Asia, they play it as a, like a group, like as a group activity. And in fact, they sit um, in China, I believe it is, they sit facing the directions, east, west, north and south. So it kind of connects you with nature, like the four players. And um, so there's a type of social connection that comes along with playing um, Meijong. And these, I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that right, but anyway, you know which one I mean. And, uh, and you know, players um, can talk to, to each other. They can engage with, uh, with sort of a strategy game. And it's really fun, um, a fun one of, of matching tiles and um, easy to play. It's not hard. That's one that's easy to, to, to pick up. Another one, of course, is chess. Chess has had this stereotype all of, you know, its life that it's basically for intelligent people that you don't, you can't play chess unless you're smart. But of course, this is not true. It's become so popular all around the world. It's a strategic game. And it's basically thinking about like what ifs, you know, if I do this, then that will happen. And it's, it's about thinking strategically. And it's played outdoors on big um, open air chess boards. It's, it's, it's played uh, competitive events, of course. And it encourages concentration and focus. And again, it's that if then this will happen. So if I do this, then this will happen. I think it's really a cool game. I know my son, one of my sons, really, well, I both loved chess. And I think it's really contributed to his uh, ability now to be really super focused and calm and great arbitrary, uh, what do you call it, negotiation skills, because he knows how to think if I do this, 
this might happen or any number of things might happen. This is my plan. So that's a really good one. I, chess is a good one. I've never really been able to play that game properly. I don't know why. I just haven't tried. I, I probably should go back and have a go. Do you play chess? Is that one of your favorites? So we've got, uh, you know, several others that are maybe more suited to you if you're more of a uh, sort of a verbal uh, based person. But chess is a good one to consider. Okay, jigsaw puzzles. This is a great way to stretch your brain. Now, a lot of kids, um, this is the first thing they actually, um, you know, learn is, is uh, you know, how to uh, do this kind of puzzles and, and jigsaws. But they find, you can find peace and calm from it. It's a really great way of lo looking like in life at all the complex pieces that go into, into our lives, all the different ways that we deal with, you know, things that don't seem to connect, but then you find a point. It's really interesting to look at these games from a sort of psychological perspective and thinking about, um, you know, why why they doing them and why practicing them can actually help you a lot. Um, you know, coming uh, going back in your real life, it's really kind of an interesting one. I was actually there's a, um, a thing about children too because they they learn it almost from the beginning, so it's really important to encourage kids to do jigsaw puzzles and shape matching shapes and that kind of thing. It's just a really good exercise for their little brains and for ours as well. And, I, and again, I'll remind you to go up to 60 and Me because our game section has got not just these ones, but it's got others like strategy games, word games, um, you know, uh, solitary games, card games, all kinds. And these are just a few that will help your brain buzz. It's really important. <laughs> to keep that brain going. Another thing, oh, I was just talking about uh, slowing dementia. I made a note here about this. There's the Albert Einstein College of Medicine found that if you, people that do jigsaw puzzles are actually more likely, and crossword puzzles too, more likely to uh, have less issues with, with dementia. And crossword puzzles, by the way, is, is another one. Uh, people do these more in a more leisurely way. And maybe you start on the Sunday paper and then you just work, work it through the week. But that's another really great way of exercising your brain to keep focused and social. You can call a friend for help and there's all kinds of other benefits to, to doing crossword puzzles. Finally, solitaire. Now, I, when I was a little younger, I used to play solitaire a lot. It was one of those um, thinking games. I could always do it while I was thinking other things because it's very easy, very um, sort of rhythmic and um, predictable. You kind of know what you're looking for. You're looking for different card, um, you know, suites and suits. And it's like, okay, I can do this and relax. And so for me, it was always a very relaxing thing. And it is. It's a super easy and fun way to exercise your and challenge your brain. So those are some ideas. I hope that you, have you got any others that you'd like to recommend? We've written lots of articles, by the way, on 60 and Me about these games, about chess, about, um, you know, the power of gaming to, uh, for, the, for helping your brain grow and also to encourage creativity. It's a really powerful way to stretch your brain and improve creativity, which we all know helps us in our lives in general. And I hope I've done a good job of explaining to you these games from a you know tactical level, but then also how you can apply those um, game skills to your life. So do you enjoy playing in any of these free brain games? I'd love to know your feedback on this. Maybe I've missed one or two, so please tell me. And check out the Games on 60 and Me website uh, under that tab that says Games and uh, let us know what you think. There's some really cool games and they're totally free to play. You don't have to, to pay a penny. Uh, so which one is your favorite brain game? So leave your comments below. Let's have a, have a conversation, share with each other. And again, I want to thank you for being here. Thanks for checking out 60 and Me and uh, look at all our other channels. We've got uh, She Cruises, Retire Different and uh, Learn to Simplify, which are sort of secondary game um, sites to 60 and Me. We love to be talking about all the different things that are on the minds of women over 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 and uh, better. So take good care, everybody. Have a fabulous day and uh, go play a game. Stretch your brain. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.